The Games of the 33rd Olympics will be coming up soon in Japan. At the Games, a Nigerian woman will be making a record-breaking appearance for the first time ever. A Nigerian, an African, is appearing at the Olympics for the seventh record-breaking time. Funke Oshonaike is a Nigerian international table tennis player, an Olympian gold medalist, the first female table tennis player to attend the Olympic Games seven times, starting with Atlanta 1996. She is the CEO of Funke Oshonaike Foundation. She was born on April 28, 1975, into a family of 10. She learned to play table tennis by watching her elder brother at the age of 14. She started her tennis career on the streets of Shomolu in Lagos in the early 1980s. For her exploit in the game at such a young age, the Lagos state government awarded her a scholarship covering her secondary and tertiary education. She attended the University of Lagos, where she backed a diploma in physical and health education before delving into professional table tennis. She left the shores of Nigeria for Italy to pursue a professional table tennis career in 1994 and was there for four years before leaving for Hamburg, Germany. Funke became the Nigerian table tennis champion at the age of 16. She also became the African champion at the age of 17 and has since held that title on various occasions. Her Olympic career started at the Atlanta 1996 Games and she has qualified for every Olympic event since then. The high point of her career was in 2003 when she won four gold medals for Nigeria at the 8th All-African Games in Abuja, barely six months after giving birth to her first child. Tokyo 2020 will be her seventh appearance at the Olympics, a feat never achieved before by any African woman and the first African woman in the world of table tennis to accomplish such. For this, she would bag a seventh club award during the Games in Tokyo, Japan. She founded the Funke Oshonaike Foundation to cater to the needs of indigenous young Nigerians with a burning desire for sports. She is the mother of two teenage boys and resides in Hamburg, Germany. Funke Oshonaike, as I was even saying that, what was going through your mind? I'm like thinking, is he really talking about me? <laughs> But now you know I'm talking about now you. I know. Now How I know. How does it feel? Seven times. It's, it's unbelievable. Hang on. No woman, Nigerian, African, has ever achieved that feat. Exactly. And no woman in table tennis world has ever achieved that feat. I'm the only woman even in table tennis world. And sometimes when I think about it, I just be like, am I dreaming? Yeah, I dreamt about it four years ago. And yeah. It's life, it has come to reality, and I still can't believe it until I go to Tokyo. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, so you can <laughs> still believe it. No. You started this in 1996. That was your first appearance. Yeah, exactly. I was very young, and I was actually kind of shocked when my coach said I qualified to go for the Olympics. You know, I actually did qualify before the 1996, yeah, Barcelona. I think Barcelona 88, but my coach told me that Funke, you are still young, don't worry, let the senior ones go first. You know, I'm very, very sure that you're going to go for so many Olympics. And look at me now. Who knows, you might even be going for the eighth time. Oh, come on, I don't think so. Well, 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 let's deal with Am I go? Yeah. No, well, yes. Am I go? Well, hang on. <laughs> going there is not just visiting. You have to be, you have to be really fit. Yeah? You have to qualify. Yeah. Yeah? So you qualified on all seven occasions. Yes, I did. The last one was the toughest, and I cried like a baby. <coughs> Who taught you table tennis? Um, I'm from a family of ten. With, with my, my parents got ten children, plus my parents were, were 12 number. Um, my brother played table tennis, my senior brother. And um, I used to be a tomboy. 
So I like to do everything he was doing back then. So he used to play table tennis and I'd just be like, I like table tennis too, brother. Can you teach me how to play table tennis? But unfortunately, we were leaving them. The 10 children and with my parents were living in one room apart. One room. I won't even put apartment. One room face, you, face me and face you. So we were not actually having a table tennis board, but we had something called a soccer way. You know what yeah, they call soccer yeah, way? So yeah. that's how I started playing on the soccer way. From there, a neighbor, you know, on the next street, bought a table tennis board. Then I moved to table tennis board. Then one day I was playing with a lot of people. I'm talking about the 80s, you know. A lot of people saw me. Most of the time when I play table tennis, they all gather around me and just be like, oh, look at this girl playing table tennis. Hey, girl. There were not many women. <laughs> no, back that. then there were no many women. So one day I was playing and um, a guy saw me and just be like, would you like to go to Lagos State Sports Council to start, you know, training? And that is how it all started. What did your parents think when you started rising in tennis stardom? My daddy supported me 100 percent, 100 percent. My mommy, actually, because I'm not from a rich family, you know, my mommy actually wanted me to continue hawking for her. But my daddy stopped me. Can't you see that this girl is talented? Come on, leave her alone. Leave her. Let the other. Uh, what were uh, you hawking then? <laughs> you know, um, what sort of things were you hawking? I remember I did uh, bread. And I did um, provisions. We call it provisions in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah that was what I was okay. And my daddy stopped me from doing that. You know, that she just faced my studies and table tennis. And I, if I, I will never forget that even my first, my daddy bought me my first racket and he had to borrow money to buy me my first racket. That's why my daddy is my life. <laughs> I love him. Unfortunately, I, I, I like no. how you said you started. Yeah. It was your brother that was using you as a bet. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> yes. And collecting money. <laughs> how many years of your tennis career have you put in now? If we have to calculate everything together, maybe more than 35 years. Okay, 35 years. More than. And you have done the Olympics for 25 years. Yes, sir. Okay, that is amazing. Now, you have not just stopped there. You have started a foundation, haven't you? Yep. Tell me about this foundation. You see, like I told you before, I, was, I started from a humble beginning. I know how it feels that when you love something and your parents are not buoyant enough to help you out. So every time I come to Nigeria, the kids, always, the kids call me mama. You know, they always come to me and be like, mama, please, do you have t-shirt? Do you have balls? Do you have rubber? Do you have racket? You know, and every time they come to me like that, it's reminded me of how my humble beginning, how I started. So that's how I started thinking that I think the best thing for me to do is to start a foundation so that I should, I should be bringing some things from Europe and give to all of them, you know. That is how Funke Oshonaike Foundation started. Believe me, I love it more than table tennis. Really? All those kids, they give me joy. When, when I give them to me, you know, in, in Germany, I live in Germany, when I give, they don't even care, you know. But when I, the, 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 the laughter, the joy, what I see in their faces, oh, I, 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 can't, I, I can't stop. I love it. I love it. The foundation, right? Um, what are the kind of activities that go on there? Yeah, I started, actually, my first found, found it was a clinic, you know, I, I came with a lot of things from Germany to Nigeria, the way we're doing it there, you know, I brought it here to Nigeria, I came with a lot of equipment, you know, we are, because most of the time when we are training in Nigeria, we don't normally have enough balls, but in Germany, you see balls on the floor, different balls, you know, you just have to have everything, you must be comfortable, so I came with all the experiences from Germany, so we did like a three days clinic, for them, I talked with them, you know, how to be a champion. I told them about me because a lot of, a lot of them don't know about my humble beginning. So after the three days clinic, then we do a competition, you know, to round it up. Then, yeah, then I give some, the winner some cash, some money. Where do you gift. get the money from? Um, the first one, <laughs> the first one I had, I had a sponsor, you know, and um, I asked so many people, I'm a woman. And that is my difficulty in Nigeria. What's the best tennis you have ever played? 
The best one is All African Games Koja 2003. I, I just gave birth. My, my first boy, he was six months old, and I won four gold medals for Nigeria. Really? Yes, that was, I can never forget that. Who's your favorite tennis player in Nigeria? Oh, the old ones, right? What do you mean the old ones? The young and upcoming ones? No, we don't, we don't have that right now because things have changed. I don't have anyone right now. That's why it's hard for me to stop right now because I need another person to be better than me to take, take over, over when I'm, I'm gone. But I've not been able to see anyone and it's so sad. To why is it so difficult? We, 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 we've got lots of talent, but we don't... <laughs> Nigeria. Is it sports management? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we don't have um, enough good coaches that can actually take care of female child. Let me put it like that, because we have a lot of boys that are good, but we don't have a lot of girls. Nowadays, it is not like only about table tennis. You need more of, to talk to the girls. You know, they get distracted easily. A lot of things has to come hand in hand. You know, when you have to train a girl child, and we don't have that, you know. And every time I come to Nigeria and I see the way they talk to them, I'm always being like, why are you doing this? You're not encouraging them, you're discouraging them. You have them. suffered such abuses in the past, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> I've got Can to you know. just remind me? Uh, let me tell you one occasion. After training one day, a man just, I just told him, can you please, are you going my way? He's on, uh, he's on a boat, he used to be on, because he's gone now, he's late now. He said, okay, we'll give me a ride. On our way, he just stopped at one hotel, you know? He just like, okay, you know what? I want to do something here. Can you follow me? I did follow him. And he said I should come with him to, 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 to his room. I did follow him. Then before I know what is happening, he just be like, we should get down. I just went down and kneeled down on my knees. <laughs> I did that. I just went on my knees and just be like, I'm so sorry, How sir. How old were you then? <laughs> I think that was before I left Nigeria. I should be like 19. I just went on my knees and I started begging him, excuse me, sir. I'm a Binu. I'm so sorry. I'm not like that. You're so, you're a very good man. Please, can you please allow me to go? I need to go. You know? Oh, he just looked at me and be like, oh, you're such a good girl. It's okay. Please, but can you do me a favor? Please don't tell anybody what happened today. And I didn't tell anybody. But you see, a lot of Nigerian young women are also facing, you know, such abuses. What do you think? <laughs> do you know how many girls that have written me and told me what they are going through? I've, 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 I've received a lot of messages from a lot of them. Yeah, that is why I need to do more. They are going through a lot from if they are their coaches, the administrators, you know, things like that, you know. I just kept telling them, keep saying no. Is your foundation not, you know, looking at such... Yeah, you yeah, know, sure. Thing? That is part of it. That's why they could be able to but talk have they got to, to me. Be, have they got to be athletes? Have they got to be sportsmen and women? Or uh, just generally no, women? No, 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 generally women. They can talk to me, but, you know, I'm into sport. You know, of course anybody that knows me can always write me and tell me what they are going through. And I, I will be able to use myself as an example to them. Hey, all that happens to me in life, I don't think it just happened to me just like that. It's part of experience for me. Maybe if, if it has not happened to me, I wouldn't know. That is why when people talk to me, when guests talk to me and they tell me what they are going through, I'm always ready. I know what to tell them. I know how to make them smile. I know how to make them happy. And I'm so happy for that. And I'm so grateful to God that I went through all that. No regret, really. I've got no regret. With everything I've gone through with relationship, battered yeah let me i got to know that it's rape now everything well, i don't care i just give thanks to god because i'm a survivor and i'm happier today you have lived outside this country and you hear stories about nigeria how does it make you feel <laughs> sad i don't know what is happening i'm still in shock i want to really understand what is happening why some people want breakups some people want this some people want that <clears throat> I, don't, I don't understand. Why Nigeria is so special is because of our unity, you know? We are stronger together. 
But I really don't know why people are saying that we should break up. I don't know. Some people with this one will say this, that one will say that, or you are there, this one there, that one there. I don't understand. And I just hope we can still come together. We can still be the way we used to be. So you believe in one Nigeria? I believe in one Nigeria. Right, there you go. Don't pick more than one. There you go. So you have picked a question. Tata. What led to your being depressed at some point in life? How did you come out of it? Yeah, I was really depressed when, when, yeah, when, <laughs> oh my God, I don't like it. Okay, I, I have to be strong right now. Come on, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, I got depressed when, um, with my ex, you know, when everything kaput. We call it kaput in Germany. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, he, he dealt with me and he left. And I was very sad. I was afraid. I never knew how, how I was going to take care of my two kids, you know. I was going to pay my bills. And things were really going upside down for me. Yeah, it was a terrible time for me. But... <clears throat> Thank God I got over it. At what stage did you think of marriage? You know, at what stage did it happen to you? Did I think of getting married? You yeah. mean married? I was not actually thinking of getting married. I was I, I got pregnant before I got I got married. Okay. When I got pregnant, I was not ready because I was still playing professional table tennis. But I just looked at me, I said, Funke, you are 28. What is stopping you? You can Take care of your kid because I just started dating my my ex back then, and I just lost the fiance that I was supposed to get married to two years before then. So I was not really ready. But then I got pregnant, and then I said, "Come on, come on, you love kids, you can have it." And thank God, I chose to have that baby. And the baby, my first boy, is 18 years old today. He's an adult. And Does I, he play tennis? Uh, my kids, um, both of them don't don't play. They don't play tennis. They don't play tennis. What sort of experiences have you learned from, you know, being who you are? I've learned a lot. I've learned how to be strong, how to be on my own, how to be happy without asking for happiness from anybody. You know, it, it has to start from me. I remember when, when I was playing in Nigeria at the age of 15, every time there was a competition in Nigeria, people were always wooing me. Ooh, they never liked me. And um, it was only my dad <laughs> and some few people that were always, that was always clapping for me. And I remember my daddy telling me, Funke, don't worry, everybody cannot like you. Yeah, everybody cannot like you. And you took that with you? And I took that with me. Wonderful. Can you relate to anyone, your happiest moments? I've got a lot of them. Yeah, I'm sure. And you know one of them now? Yes, indeed. <laughs> and I'm, I'm even thinking, I'm, you know, I'm trying to picture the way you look on that day. That you I cried in. a lot on that day. When yeah, but, but you're going for the Olympics <laughs> for yes, the seventh time. I, I, and you like didn't I, get the recognition. Like I told you, I was going through a lot. I, was, I, was, I just had an operation before the competition. I was still going through a lot. Physically, mentally, emotionally, emotionally. So when I qualify, I was so overjoyed that I was just crying. I was so happy. And the other, another time is when I gave birth to my baby boy. And mm. you're looking at the baby, oh, this belongs to me. I can't forget that. And seeing him growing up. And the second one too. They both gave me tough time. The pregnancy was tough. <laughs> the pregnancy was tough. I remember the label, I just kept hearing paper. <laughs> but when they gave me the baby, the second one was born first, first January, you know. It, it was, there was a time when the doctors, they left me, they went to see, uh, say Happy New Year to their family, <laughs> and they came back to me. But immediately they gave me that baby. I just called him unique. That is why he's unique. Really? Yes. Congratulations. Thank in you. In advance. Thank you. On the award. What, what did they tell you it's going to look like? How did they prepare your mind for it? No, they know. Yeah, they're just going to call me out with the other ones and them um, say something about me and they give me my award. Yes. 
Let's see, you know, there's COVID, uh, things, a lot of things have changed. Uh, let's just see how it's going to be. Uh, it's it's going to come with some money, isn't it? No, come on. It's just like you telling me that uh, the, the, the murder is going to come with... No, murders don't come with money. It is just your country that is going to give you award for that. So, but do you expect an award from your country? I hope so. I hope they will appreciate me. I just hope so. Oh, of course. I mean, Chioma Ajuma was After uh, 25 years. on this program some time ago mm -hmm. and complained of not being, mm -hmm. you know, giving a, a house because she's not a Lagosian. But mm -hmm. I think the Lagos State Governor reversed mm -hmm. that now uh, after the program. Uh, yes, I'm proud of so uh, So, what if you go there to Japan and win a medal alongside the presentation? Oh, oh my God! <laughs> know what to say <laughs> if I win a medal at my age that's gonna be like a miracle from God that I, I, in fact oh everybody all over the world would talk about it and I would just be like God you are the greatest he is the greatest actually but then I would talk more about him it's gonna be something out of this world <laughs> how often do you come to Nigeria um, normally two times in a year. Okay. I, I couldn't come last year. I missed Nigeria last year because of COVID. And for me to come now after like more than one year, I'm so happy to be here. Unfortunately, it's a, just a very, very short stay. You, you, I mean, you got this recognition by the Nigerian Olympic Association, obviously for being, you know, a seven time Olympian. Um, what did you get outside that? Maybe when I come back, maybe I will get something more. Now, I'm saying this with all sense of seriousness. You know, I, I, I was hearing um, Rochewe talking about encouraging Nigerian athletes and sportsmen. We don't do that here. How does it make you feel that in your own country, someone like you, seven times Olympian, is not getting a recognition as much as you should and over there that's what you're going to get i was in italy i i was in italy for like two 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 three weeks for training tour i from italy i went to jump back to germany to come to nigeria i had to stop my training tour a little bit because of this occasion here a girl only a girl qualified in table tennis to go for the olympics and this girl was given a car for the, our first Olympics, was given a car and it's written on the car as sponsors. And that is the car she drives everywhere. And this is me here and we, we have a lot of, a lot of Olympians too that don't even have a car. What are these five items? What do you think they are? Items. Yes. I will take water. <laughs> okay. So what else? Um, water blanket. A blanket. Yeah. Because at night, normally feel cold. Um, pictures of my kids. Yeah. <laughs> and I will take Gary. Yeah. I love to eat Gary. Ijebu Gary. Ijebu Gary with sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Up at four, right? Yeah, that's four. And um, and um, what else do I, do, do, do I need? You said I... Okay, but even while you are there for that period of time, maybe two weeks or so, what would you be reflecting on? What would you be thinking about? I'll be missing my kids, my boys. And I'll be thinking about how to... I love helping people. What can I, how, what can I do more? To, you know, to help the kids. I'm talking about general right now. It's not only the females, especially the poor ones. Yes, I'll be thinking. Then maybe I, I, I should have like a, a pen and a paper to keep jotting things down. Yeah. yeah. We are proud of you already. So is Nigeria. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much for being on this program. I thank you for having me. I will keep watching your show, don't worry. <laughs> It's been the chats. I am Manny. See you next time.